The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, the last Saturday of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. But if you look out the window, it doesn't really look possible. But yeah, January is hours away. Yeah, of course, with all the green with, grass. We're talking with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. I'm Andy Brownell. And I guess probably could say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Did you have a good Christmas break there? Oh, yes. It was busy, hectic, but, you know, felt a little weird. Felt a little weird with the weather being the way it was, but I'm not one that you're going to hear complaining about it because when you have to go to Sam's Club or Costco and load up the back end of the car with, you know, a bunch of groceries or go shopping for gifts and all the running around, the nice weather was a really good thing. And for all the people that have to travel, I was so happy for them that they didn't have to deal with bad roads and all of that. So I am not complaining. I'm, for one, confident that we will have plenty of snow yet this winter. <laughs> I, I share your confidence. Not I'm, this I'm year, just, I'm, not I'm, this I'm year, just, but this winter. I'm just fearful that we're going to have a late spring that we'll get yeah. hit on the other end of this. but. You never or, know. Just, or just maybe so. I know because it always kind of seems to balance out, right? We get the same kind of number of inches. So maybe we're just going to have some really snowy months in January and February. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it is the weather. It is the way it'll be. But I do know of a extended family that made a trip for the holidays to Minnesota to spend time with their loved ones because... They live in Mexico and wanted to see what Christmas was like with oh, snow. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, that's so sad. And I heard, I did hear a lot of people talk about, um, you know, how hard it was for kids that, like, got new sleds or skates or things like that. I mean, we drive past the lake up in Lake City. It's not frozen. Wow. There was actually a guy who thought he was cute, and he actually was pretty cute. He probably put on a wetsuit, I'm guessing, but he had a Santa suit over the top of that, and he was riding his jet ski on Lake Pepin on Christmas Day. I actually saw a picture of that on Facebook. Somebody shot yeah. a picture of that guy. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, don't see that at Christmas time. No, 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 no. no I'm saying it is, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but the oh, mild okay. temperatures have totally affected our real estate market as well. I think between... Um, the interest rates dropping and people being excited about that and then the weather just staying nicer longer. I mean, for one thing, we're seeing new construction still, you know, we're seeing the builders still out there working. Right. And usually by the end of the year, you're a little bit limited unless you're to the inside of the house. Correct? Right. The ground's so, yeah, not that's frozen. A little no, it's not. And so that's interesting. But People are more eager to go out looking at, at houses when it's not so doggone cold out and we're not driving through a blizzard. So we've been pretty darn busy, and I am happy about that. You know, and I never thought of that aspect of it because when the snow is covering the ground, you can't really see the landscaping or the yard. But now it's Correct. all exposed. Right. Yep, and you just don't know what you're getting, but now you do. So it is. It's good. And it's just easier for people, too, You know, especially if they – you know, are traveling here because they know they're coming. Like I was working with some people yesterday that traveled from Indiana and they're like, well, you know, we're off work for the holiday break and the weather's nice. So we thought we might as well make a trip up. Now, had it been blizzarding, they probably wouldn't have been as anxious to do that. No, no. So, yeah, no, it's it's good. And, and I this think is it's usually the time of the year. Better. Traditionally, you see a real lull around this time of the year, right? Just because yeah. everybody's busy with family stuff. Yeah, you're right. And I can tell you between um, a week ago and today, I have really been crazy. I got called to a listing appointment over in Lake City, and the house was going to be like 560000 And I thought, oh, I know somebody who might like this house. So I called those people, and they said, can we come on Christmas Eve? And I'm like, well, that's up to the... That's up to the sellers, and they're like, sure. We didn't even have it listed yet, and they came, and then they came back the day after Christmas, and 
Then they wrote an offer on it. So we put that deal together before ever getting it listed. So then those sellers wrote an offer on something that they wanted. And that was on a $650,000 listing. And we put that deal together. And then those sellers had already purchased one of my listings in Wabasha. So it was like a chain of deals on the slowest week of the year. (laughs) So, yeah, it's good. Sold a house on Christmas Eve. Couple of them, a couple of them, yeah, really. They put the couple <laughs> deals together right over the Christmas holidays. But wow. it's okay. You know, I've said it before. Every day is the same for me. We're in the service industry, and we work when people are available. So I'm lucky. My family's all local. I don't have to travel. And, yeah, I had plenty of time with my family over the holidays and time to get some deals put together. Yeah. Actually, sometimes it's probably good to have a break, right? <laughs> well, oh, you know, that's the day that I was, it was the day before Christmas Eve that I was actually showing the house. And um, so my kids came over, our kids came over and our son cooked and then our son-in-law and daughter cleaned up. I'm like, hey, I, I could get used to this. Exactly. There you go. Make it part it of the plan. <laughs> it wasn't bad at all. So anyway. Is, is this the first time you've been out showing a house on Christmas Eve that you can remember? No. Nope, nope, it is not. I actually remember one time, I remember this one because um, she was a good friend of mine from high school and she and her husband were already divorced but had to stay in the house together until it sold before either one of them could go and buy their next house. And they were friendly. It was, you know, wasn't a problem, but, you know, not ideal for anybody. But I remember selling their house on Christmas Eve that was several years ago, but I remember calling her and saying, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I sold your house. She's like, best Christmas present ever. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, no, it's not the first time. So, interest rates are down a little bit again from the last time I checked. Yeah. Um, so, things have been moving the right way as far as mortgage rates are concerned. Isn't that great news? Um, I think I have something here. I don't want to... I don't want to speak to interest rates because, you know, that's not my, that's not my realm, but I can read it from somebody else's article here. Okay. Okay. I have here that the, and this is according to, who is this according to? Real Estate News. This came from Real Estate News on December 29th. The 30 year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.61 this week. Pending home sales were up in three regions, but on a national level did not increase or drop in November, so stayed kind of the same. And economists continue to express optimism about the housing market in 2024. So a lot of the things that I have, you know, been saying, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.6, according to Freddie Mac's latest survey, and the 15-year fixed rate mortgage, according to that same survey, fell slightly to 5.91. So these are going in the right direction. We are definitely excited about this. So you could see your spring market start up in January or February. Honestly, well, you know, depending on this weather, I feel like we could just right be in the full swing of things because I already have, um, I'm showing houses today. And I have a listing appointment for the day after New Year's, so the 2nd of January. And I have people coming from out of town on the 6th of January. So, I mean, this is, it's it's good. Yeah, and this is, you used to say this was the time of the year where things got really quiet for you because yep. people yep. are traveling all over the place and they have family staying with them. And, <laughs> and you're working. You're working harder than yeah, and, wow, that's amazing. And I love that I keep reading these things saying that the sweet spot, I mean, they're predicting, and obviously you can't hold me to this because these are just economist predictions, sure. but they're talking about the sweet spot for the interest rate this year is going to be right around 5.5. So if you're sitting here listening to me and thinking, well, do we wait until they drop to 5.5 or do we buy now while they're still, you know, 6.61 or whatever. And my answer would be clearly to buy now and just refinance when they drop. Because as the rates drop, we all know what happens. More buyers come into the market, right? With every full percent the rates drop, a million buyers come on the scene nationwide. 
So as buyers come on the scene, as you can imagine, prices go up. It's the old supply and demand law that we learned back in, what, seventh, eighth grade? I don't know. So right now we are still very short of inventory. So as these rates are going down, you know, buyers are getting more and more excited and they know that if they wait, the prices are just going to continue to go up, up. So it makes more sense to buy pay a little extra on the interest rates until they drop approximately a percent and then go back and refinance. So and you're saying that, that sweet spot will be a drop of about a point and a half from where we're at right. now. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So Perfect. I think that's, that's what people should be thinking. All right. Well, we'll let them ponder that during the break, but we'll be back in All a moment right. with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. On this Saturday morning at News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning and welcome back. We're with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. It's Saturday morning. And Robin, you talked about the good old basics of economic supply and demand. And I imagine with the interest rates sliding a little bit lower over the past month or so, has that translated into higher prices? Absolutely. And I, I just saw, um, you know, Tom O'Reilly did a story recently, a couple of days ago, about how, oh, the prices have gone up so much and it's so high and, you know, becoming unaffordable. And I thought, listen, at the end, he said 4.8%. And if you remember, Andy, from the day we've started this show, I've always said house prices go up on average, 3 to 5% per right. year, right? So I'm like, well, that's just the high end of average. Jeez. I mean, a few years ago, they were going up in the double digits and things were going pretty crazy. But when you talk about um, just how bad, like what are these numbers? Like how short are we? There was a recent interview with Nick Bailey, our very own Remax CEO and such a smart guy. And he says that the U.S. right now today is short four and a half to five million homes. Wow. I mean, that's that's quite a shortage. And so, yeah, prices are going to go up because, again, there's not enough for everybody. So when you look at it that way, but I, I'll hone in and I'll give you a little closer look at how existing home sales have fared across the country in the month of November, okay? So that's our latest housing report right. from the National Association of Realtors. So in the Northeast, um, the number of sales fell 2% compared to October, but the prices went up 4.8% from the prior year, okay? Got it. Um, Got it. In the Midwest, sales increased 2.1% from the previous month. And again, I think we've just been having some unseasonable weather and people are excited about the rates, but up 2.1% from October. And it doesn't typically go up from October to November. So that's that's great. Um, reaching an annual rate of 940,000. Existing home sales were, down, were still down 5.7% from a year ago. Okay, and the median price was two hundred eighty thousand eight hundred, which is up four point nine percent from November of twenty twenty two. So about exactly in line with what they were announcing we have going on in our local market. And this is good. We, we want our house prices to go up because those of us who already own our houses want that equity to oh, yes. continue to grow. Right. And that's what we push. That's that's the reason I tell people you want to buy instead of rent is because you want to treat that house as that bank account that you're living in. So you what go, do we want to see happen to our bank accounts? We don't want to see them go down, right? We want to see them go up. And you brought up again the bank account that you live in. And if people are thinking, oh, I wish I was getting a higher return. Well, you're not going to get a higher return on anything that you actually get to use. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so in the South, boy, they really, that's where they really saw a boom. Sales uh, rose 4.7% from October to November. And they've had a, they had 1.77 million sales. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And that was, even though that was a lot, it was down 3.3% from the prior year. Their median sale price in the South was 351.5, which is only up 3.8% from last year. So that's probably why they saw the, the most increase in sales is because it's probably considered one of the most affordable places to buy because their prices didn't increase as quickly as they did in the other regions. And in the West, sales really fell, but we know why. The prices there are crazy, right? Right. So sales fell in the West 7.2% from a month ago, settling in at an annual rate of 640,000. Sales were down 8.6% from a year ago. But now listen, their median price is 683,200, which is up 5.3% from a year ago. So their prices are just high to begin with and then going up at the fastest rate of any of the regions. So yeah, the sales are going to slow there. People are going to move from the West to the South where they can get so much more for their money. And And they'll have at some point empty homes in California and a shortage of homes in Texas. And and then what will happen is those empty homes will drop in price and then things will, you know, natural, naturally just correct itself. Over a period of time, for sure. Over a period of time, yeah, absolutely. But with the shortage, with the shortage of houses, I don't see any empty houses sitting anywhere for a while. Right. Not when you're four million short right Right. now. That's not even a projection. That's right. That's what we're short right now. Four and a half to five million short. So yeah, it is. And so because of that, we're also seeing more new construction going up, which is fabulous creating more inventory and it's good. I mean, do you remember when we were saying, Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to building? You know, with the COVID, the uh, everything's so short, you can't get the building supplies. And if you can get them, the prices are triple and, you know, thank God that's all kind of evened itself out. Now our prices back to where they were pre COVID, no, and they never will be. And we also kind of predicted that, but they're not the crazy prices they were for a while when it was so tough to get things because I think our supply chain is just back in check. Everything. Well, obviously when things are short, people bring production online, but it takes time to ramp it up. It takes a while to ramp it up and get caught up. You're right. Yep, that is true. So, I guess, I don't know if... Do you have anything locally that we've seen? Yeah, I was going to start... Yeah, I was going to start with just what we have going on here locally, and I just didn't know if we should, if I should start that or if we were going to need to take a break. So You know what? Your sense of timing is pretty darn good, so why don't we do that? All right. (laughs) We're getting very, very close to the break time, so we'll just do it a hair early. We'll do that and come back with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. Talk about what's happening in the local real estate market here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're back. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. It's our Saturday morning chat about real estate and the real estate marketplace. And Robin, you said going into the break, you have some local numbers from November. I do. So in November 23, I'll give you an activity snapshot from the Southeast Minnesota Realtors Association, our local association. Um, a one year change in closed sales is negative 6.4. So we percent. So we sold, uh, 6.4% fewer homes year over year, which, you know, isn't terrible. At, at some points in the year, I've heard Agents in other markets talk about being down 25% and 30% in sales. So 6.4%, not too bad. Uh, One year change in the median sale price as of November was uh, 3.9%. Okay, so that's even increased since then because 
I think at the end of December, it was like 4.8%. So one year change in homes for sale. This is the exciting part. We actually have 11.7% more homes on the market. Interesting. So, yeah. I mean, and this is why people should be buying because with more houses on the market and um, the rate's still not down to where they're going to get, there's still some room for negotiating with a lot of these home sellers because they want to sell and they want to sell quicker. And so we're still seeing, you know, inspections being done, repairs being made, closing costs being paid sometimes, price reductions sometimes. So trust me when I tell you, it is a fantastic time to get out in that market and um, be a buyer for sure. And it might not be as easy two or three months down the road. Um, right. And so for, for to, the buyer, take, yeah. to take those percentages and convert them to numbers, um, our new listings, we have 355 houses on the market. Okay. That is was, probably the highest that number has been in quite a while. Yeah. Yep. And the pending sales um, are 337. And um, I think the price has moved higher as the median sale price was up 3.9% to 264.9. And the days on markets also increased. So again, this is why we have motivated sellers because they, they're they starting to panic after they've been on the market 30 days just because of what we've been used to the last couple of years. And right now, uh, the average days on market is 43 days. So okay. The month supply of inventory was up by 35%. So now we have 2.3 months worth of inventory. So even though it sounds like, oh my God, now we've got all these houses on the market, we still only have 2.3 months worth of inventory, which means if we don't get any more listings, well, when I talk to you in 2.3 months from now, we'll have zero. Yeah. And you said... Right around a month and a half is the market, the average mark time on market, and that's still really good. It, gives it is really good. Time to get packed up and put a plan in place, get your movers lined up, all the things it takes instead of trying to do it in seven days. You know. Well, that's what fascinated me when you said that some of these sellers are panicking after thirty days. It's because of just what they got used to and then what they hear in the media, and oh my God, it's taking forever. Oh my God, we have a you know. We're, we have so many more houses on the market. Well, yeah, but so many more houses is still only equates to 2.3 months worth. Months, okay? right. So we're talking 11 weeks. 11 weeks from now, um, boom, we have nothing else to sell unless we get more listings. So this is what I'm pleading for, people. If it's time to sell your house, give me a call because we want those listings. So inventory remains at a historically low level. Nationwide, 1.15 million homes for sale heading into November, 5.7% decline compared to the same time last year. All right, how does that compare to us here? Well, I think that our month's supply of inventory kind of speaks to that. Our new listings, we have 4.7% more than we did this time last year. Our pending sales, we have 4% fewer than we did last year. Closed sales, again, I said 6.4% down. Days on market is up 13.2%. Median sale price, this is what matters to the homeowners, right? Up 3.9%. That's end of November through the end of November the year before. Average sale price was up 6% to 308916 Um this one's interesting. Percent of original price received. Okay. So if we're talking about how much of a deal are you going to get? So remember when I used to say, if you got 97% of what you were asking, that was what you should expect. That was kind of the norm. That was a good offer, yes. right? Well, that might mean a 3% price reduction or 3% seller paid closing costs or something to that tune. Um, then we got to the point where it's like, oh no, you're getting... You're getting 98. Oh, no, you're getting 99. Oh, you're getting 100. You're getting 106%. You know, I mean, it was crazy, right? Well, now um, at the end of November, we were getting 96.7% 
of what properties were listed for. Okay. So actually just barely under what barely you're Barely under that 97. So these people who say, hey, that house has been on the market 30 days and I know the market's really bad. Do you think it's okay if we offer 100000 less? Well, let's see. The house is listed for 300. I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just that people get deceived by what they hear in the news because it always sounds like everything is just so bad and so negative and, you know, all of those things. So, again, with our month supply, with our inventory up 35.3% over the end of November last year, we still only have 2.3 months worth. So at the end of November last year, we only had 1.7 months worth. And this is so winter in Minnesota. Winter. When you run into situations where people get antsy after 30 days, do you try to talk them away from price reductions at that point? Oh, it depends on who I'm working for. If I'm working for the seller, I tell them, guys, these are the facts. This is how long it's taking the average house in your price range to sell. We're not even to the average days. We're fine. The fact that it's taking a little longer to sell does not mean your house has lost value because it has not. We have a supply shortage. Prices have gone up. We have this house priced right. Here are the comps. We're going to be patient and wait it out. Now, if I have the buyer and I'm writing an offer on somebody else's listing, of course, I'm going to come in and say, well, you know, seller. I mean, I don't get to talk to the seller, but you know, agent, that house has been sitting there 43 days and it's this, 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 and you want to try to, you know, work hard for whoever it is you're representing. Sure. But the truth be told, Andy, and I say this over and over and over, it should never be the strongest realtor that's winning. I mean, it should be hopefully an ideal situation is you have two educated, smart agents with experience who've done this before that know how to put a deal together that at the end of the day, the buyers didn't pay any more than they wanted to pay and the sellers didn't take any less than they wanted to take. There was no pressure put on, you know, put on either side. And we truly do create a win-win at the end of the transaction because that's the best way to do real estate. Yeah. Everybody walks away with a smile. Everybody feels good about, I mean, when you're investing that much money, you need to feel good. And when you're parting with one of your most valuable assets, you need to feel good. So it should never be about realtors trying to get in and strong arm or push people to pay more than they're comfortable paying or take less more than they're comfortable taking because that always ends bad. And that points out the importance of finding the right real estate agent well, to represent and you, know, you. And and when people ask me, you know, Robin, really to what do you owe your 23 years of ultra success? And I say it's because I am a really honest person and I do treat people very fairly and I am very transparent and I'm never, ever going to pressure someone into buying a house or selling a house. I am here to guide you and help you and give you, you know, share my expertise with you so that you're making the right decision. I never want somebody to pay more than a house is worth. I never want someone to sell their house for less than we could get for it. So I spend a lot of time studying studying the market, knowing the comps, and feeling like I can really bring my expertise to the table. And if you want to get that expertise on your side of the table, I guess, how do we get, get a hold of you, Robin? Well, as you know, I answer my phone when it rings. So <laughs> please just call me on my cell phone. And that number is 507-259-4926. Oh, fantastic. And you have I, a... Do I have one second to just say one thing, Andy? Absolutely. All right, just closing out the year, I just want to thank all of our listeners. I get so much feedback from this show, and I absolutely love it. It just puts a smile on my face every time. And thank you so much to all of our clients who helped us have a very successful 2023. We're super excited to help you all in 2024. And Happy New Year's to everybody. Happy New Year. All right, Robin, we'll talk to you in the new year next week. On Saturday morning with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results at News Talk 1340, KROC AM at 96.